Welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to this, uh, well, I think we're calling it the Redwood SG build because uh, you guys chose option three out of the two options I gave you. I wanted to build a Les Paul or a uh, Les Paul Jr. You said, hey. SG, so. SG it is. Wow, the, that's actually quite pretty. The laser blasting through. But anyway, now this guitar is, uh, well, it's going to be somebody else's. The other plan is that it's going to be finished by the end of the month when the major Crimson Guitars sale, the first of the year, uh, ends. And uh, the beautiful thing is that for every £10 you spend at crimsonguitars.com, you get a pound off a ticket on dailyguitardraw.com to win this instrument. It's going to be a cool instrument. SGs with thin tops annoy me. You've got too much going on because you're carving through. You want the facets. They define the SG and you're carving through the wood. I don't like that look. So, of course, based on the fact that I'm currently in Acoustasonic mode with the uh, Redwood, the Redwood Cowrie build, uh, which is under finish. I'm not just forgetting that that exists. Um, I thought, why not make the Redwood top but inlay it in? I'm going to do some routing. I'm going to do some jointing of the top. I'm probably even going to, well, we're going to make some progress. Uh, yeah, on with the build. Uh, I've got two different templates, one with a 7.25 mil offset and one with six. We'll see what those look like. But initially, initially I need to, uh, I need to joint this top. There is a bit of a gap. We're going to have the body in here, we're going to work out and have a lot of space for back plates, etc. I'm quite excited. With all of the prep for shows and uh, uh, the, <laughs> the various insanities going on right here, I've not had that much time to actually build guitars recently. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have some fun here. Now, I'm not using, obviously, I'm going to be going inside these lines. But it feels wrong to draw just part of it. Oh, yes, of course. Three P90s. What have I done? What have I done to myself? <laughs> yeah, so of course I drew the initial one backwards. Yeah. Still, it was some pretty shots, though. This initial one is a six millimeter or so offset. I, I like this. I like this a lot. Yeah, I think the six mil, we've got now three distinct clean lines uh, rather than having a, the issue, and I spoke about this in the design, is if I went from here at a six mil distance to th there at a six mil distance and had a nice even line, my carve wouldn't be right. The carve is thicker at this point or, or deeper at this point, which means that my line would go from there but would be about here potentially where the glue line is being uh, shown. And then of course there's always the risk that uh, the glue line isn't absolutely perfect, which is it's not something I'm particularly worried about for myself, but what I am worried about, wow that sounded arrogant, is Redwood 
in the past, sometimes I've had a reaction where using standard wood glue, redwood has <sighs> gone very dark. The glue joint looks bad, even though it's nice and tight. It, the tannins, it's, it's that kind of effect somehow. So we're avoiding that entirely by inlaying it. A good shooting board is absolutely essential to uh, a happy life. The shooting board holds the plane, uh, holds the wood above the level so the uh, blade will actually work. Generally I use a number seven, but uh, for the length of this joint and for the fact that uh, my number seven is currently not sharp enough, this low angle jack is just fine. So as you'll see, when I start planing, I'm putting my pressure on the front of the, the plane. And then once I've established my flat edge, I pull back, lean my arm on the back edge of the plane, and I'm putting the pressure on the, uh, on the flat edge that I've created, and following that so that I don't create curves. Sounds like a lot to think about, but it's actually fairly, fairly intuitive. Now, personally, I just do one piece of wood at a time. Many people put them together and, uh, and do it as a pair. I, uh, I don't know. It's valid. It's valid. It's just not, just not me. And uh, yeah, obviously I've still got a way to go. Now the real thing is, where's my gap? If you move one of the pieces, you'll be able to see, okay, that's uh, touching quite nicely at the end. And we all know that the gap is, is in here, probably in both pieces. But as you move it along, you'll see and just with the pressure of my fingers, you should be able to close it. If it's taking actual clamping pressure to close the joint, then uh, it's not a good joint. I also need a new shooting board. This one's just a little bit dodgy at this point. So you can see I've got a gap here. Now if I move that piece there, the gap closes up. Except for just there, if I move that piece there, so it's a bit higher on that edge, but uh, when you move that up you can see that the joint itself is good. It's just a shadow I'm looking at there. I'm happy to glue that up. Most of the time you actually won't need clamps when you're doing this sort of a job. Uh, well, you do need uh, a little bit more control over how much glue comes out there. So a little bit of glue and uh, basically the masking tape is going to do our job for us. We've, we've just come back from the show. I'm doing about 14 different things while also filming this, and I just glued up the wrong side, the wrong edge, because I'm not currently focusing on what I'm doing, and that is it's distressing. That's, yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not good. It's embarrassing, even.
It's uh, just forget that to happen. Yeah. A little bit of glue. Spread that nicely. It doesn't necessarily need to be on both sides. And then the uh, masking tape, which is on the back, and the whole instrument should just ping together. Like that. And then at this point, I just go through, pull the masking tape taut, and get an initial clamp. And I've now got pressure on both sides of the wood, pulling it together, acting as my clamp. People often ask me if I have stock in uh, any of the uh, masking tape companies because I, I use it so much. And uh, no, I think I'm missing a trick. Some fresh tissue, a little bit of water. Wipe away the excess. Uh, another option is to use a is to use a chisel or a scraper and physically get rid of the uh, the excess, which uh, is probably a better idea with this particular guitar because uh, I am worried about the uh, the tannins and water and all of that with the joint. A couple more bits of tape, turn over, rinse, repeat and uh, move on. Nice and strong. Well, while that is drying, it's, uh, which is actually going to only take 20 minutes or so in this uh, warmth, we're going to move on. <laughs> nah. How deep do we want to go? Really? If I inlay the top all the way down and it's flush, then that's, uh, that's the way that uh, normal people would do this thing. And it would look cool. But uh, you all know I have a proclivity towards overcomplicating my life. And of course the thought is to partially inlay the top in and uh, have a, well, much like the top this piece of MDF is, and if there's a, a bevel on the top, then you've got a, uh, uh, a two mil or a three mil tiny little bevel on something. I don't know. Does that remove the, uh, the sexiness of an inlaid top? Let me know in the comments below. I'm not gonna do this until the next episode and I will uh, I'll see what you think. So what that means is other than marking out here, I'm not gonna actually be able to do Anything. Now, slight change of plan with the, the format for this series. Everything's going a little bit faster because I'm trying to finish it in time uh, to coincide with the end of this fantastic sale. But uh, also, as a channel, we are as much about entertainment as we are about education. In fact, it should be the other way around. So what I'm wondering about doing is having each video slightly shorter, more of them, but focused in on a task as much as possible. Now, sometimes I'm going to have to be doing one thing and then gluing something else up to, because that's efficient. But uh, today, today it's all about shooting boards, uh, hand tools, jointing a top, not using clamps or anything like that. And yeah, Let's get this pretty redwood looking even prettier. 
and also figure out where it's going on the guitar, for that matter. Come on then. Oh my god, this looks gorgeous. Don't forget, this guitar could be yours. like Kaplan scrapers. Uh, there are videos on the channel of me talking through the sharpening process. If this scares you, check it out. It does not need to be scary. They are fantastic and incredibly useful tools. Uh, I'm not going for perfection at this point. I just want to get it roughly flat so that I can uh, cut it out in the bandsaw and, uh, and then maybe eventually. I should just put it through the damn machine, shouldn't I? I need it roughly flat so I can put it through the machine and uh, be accurate. So that's all of the excess glue gone on that face. Not that there was much to uh, begin with. Do the same on this side and uh, put it through the thicknesser. I could, of course, use a hand plane, but in the interests of brevity and speed, speed we'll move on to uh, the big old belt sander and uh, a handheld camera. I think what it is, is I'm feeling guilty that I'm supposed to be working on the hand tool only build. I really do want to finish it, but also I'm really kind of nervous at how it's going to turn out. And I'm thus avoiding everything. So this was, the, this was the side that I had drawn the front of the guitar on and it's pretty and my joint is absolutely invisible which is cool but uh, this is the back end and uh, I actually think this is prettier and it's a small piece isn't it? So if I move this all the way down here yeah, make sure I do it the right way around. Yeah, that's the wrong way around. Hey, that's engraved on the back of the thing. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, no, it's fine. I got it. There we go. If I move that down there, use my center line, then I've got even more material. Oh, let's do it the smart way. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm a bit slow today. That's rather pretty. Yeah, this is, uh, this is what I think the wood wants us to do. I'm just going to let you imagine what we've got going on here. Very cool. 
And there we are. So the point of this was the joint, uh, which you can see is, uh, is basically as, uh, as good as it gets. We've got some incredible uh, chatoyance and movement here in the, uh, in the wood. It's, it's amazing just how 3D this is, like mind-blowingly cool. And uh, yeah, I'm going to let you imagine what it's going to look like under finish. <laughs> but for now, click like, subscribe, let me know what you think of the process in the comments below. Go to crimsonguitars.com where every £10 you spend up until £300 gets you a pound off a ticket to win what this is going to turn into and uh, help support Dorset Guitar Museum and Crimson Guitars in the process. Uh, let me know also what you think of this sort of format, uh, shorter form but more, more focused uh, videos. It's, uh, yeah, I'm interested to hear. You guys rule. I will catch you in the next video, which is going to be uh, on Saturday, where I am, I'm not going to change my mind because I'm actually going to film it right now. I am going to go and do something absolutely, totally insane with the fretboard inlay. Uh, I might get into trouble with you guys for, 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 for doing this, but uh, bear with me. It's going to be cool, like super cool. And also quick, and visually impressive. See you soon. Goodbye.